Welcome to the Bespoke Laser File Setup Tutorial. Uh, the purpose of this is to give you a brief understanding of how to create uh, PDFs, EPS files and SVG files that are suitable for laser cutting. It's also uh, to give you a quick understanding of our design template which you see in front of you, uh, which has been created to help you through this process. Now, if at any stage you don't understand something that I'm talking about, uh, we don't mind you submitting your files in any format, really, um, PDF or similar, in any state. Uh, we can edit your files to suit laser cutting if you like, but we do pass those costs on to you because it does take us time. So if you can take a moment to watch this video, it'll save you some time and money. So I'll start with the instructions. Down in the bottom corner here, design within the dash border unless absolutely necessary as material sheet sizes can vary slightly. Now this is that border that you saw around the outside. It is a 5mm border that runs within the 600 by 900 canvas. If you can keep to this canvas then we're going to be able to tell exactly what scale your artwork is. The 600 by 900 canvas is the maximum that we can cut in-house um, and by cutting things in-house we're able to give you all of those bespoke services that we offer. We can cut bigger things but it's best for the tricky fiddly jobs to keep them within this 600 by 900 canvas. Now the third point Use the eyedropper tool on the text in the bottom right to tell us how to treat each path. The final artwork should not have any fill colors, stroke colors, or stroke weights other than these unless painting is required. I'll explain painting a bit later, but in terms of this uh, eyedropper section, it's over here in the bottom right. So the three main ways that you can tell us to operate the laser based on your artwork and the stroke color or fill of that artwork is score cut or engrave. What I mean by that is a cut through and a score the laser will follow the path that you have drawn it will be at a certain power obviously for a cut through that power will be much higher for a score the power will be lower the speed will also be faster for a score an engrave is different in that it will fill in those paths with very fine cuts that move from left to right across the canvas. As you can see here, they can be as small as about one-tenth of a millimeter and they can be at any power. The way that we determine the power is based on whether it's a gray, a light gray or a black. So the shallow, medium or deep engrave. The deepest we can get is generally about 1.5 to 2 millimeters if it's a thick material. So in terms of the use of those options, scoring is most commonly used to create very light cuts in the surface of materials when you want to fold them or you want to create a mask that you can peel off in successive layers. Cut through is uh, obviously as it states uh, cutting through a material fully and the engraving options are when you want to create uh, detailed uh, rasterized images uh, or create a textured surface or pattern. The alternative to engraving, as it can be quite time consuming and expensive, is to score things into a surface as opposed to engrave them. The reason why scoring is cheaper is because, as I showed you over here, it's much faster to follow the path of a letter than it is to fill it in by going backwards and forth many, many times by very small amounts. The final swatch is the instructions color and this is to be reserved only for notes and tips for us and the laser operator in order to understand your file as best we can. And anything that is that color must be put on the instructions layer which will be here in the layer palette not on the artwork layer. Now coming back to the fourth point here, these are by far the most important things to remember when designing for laser cutting. I won't read them all out because it is a long list, but remember that laser cutting is no more difficult to set up for than offset printing and really not that much more difficult than outputting to a regular desktop printer. Here we have an example of something we want to laser cut. 
Now the vectors on the left have been set up correctly for laser cutting, whereas the vectors on the right have not been set up correctly for laser cutting. Although they look very similar, they're actually very different when we get down to it. Well, the best way to see that is to convert all of your artwork into strokes into a very thin stroke like 0.001 millimeters. This will take away the effect of any stroke widths on your artwork and essentially give you something similar to these down here. What we've also done is released all clipping masks which is very important to do because it'll often show you uh, bits of artwork that were floating around previously and the paths that we used to hide those bits. As we can see the artwork on the left is very simple compared to the artwork on the right. The correct artwork here on the left is purely vector shapes that are not overlapping with each other at all. There are no fill colors, nothing going on. We can convert this to a full-on fill and it will give us exactly what we want laser cut. That means it's correct. All we need to do then is pick our swatches. Uh, so in this case, if we wanted that engraved, we would put it to a deep engrave if we like, which would be a black. You could choose that from the swatch down in the bottom right corner, or you could choose it manually. We want the outline to be cut out. So what we do is zoom out, go down here, select our eyedropper tool, and choose the cut through. Now what we end up with is just as we had above, the ready to go artwork. However on the right that would not be the case. Now I'm not going to go through the way in which we convert the incorrect artwork into the correct artwork uh, in this way uh, because it's quite detailed and it's probably going to be something for another tutorial but essentially it's through the Pathfinder tools or similar. One last thing to note is the detail that we have removed from the incorrectly set up file here and that is this hatching. The reason why we've removed it from the art final artwork is because at this scale, which is roughly uh, the size of a business card, you're not going to notice uh, that hatching at all. It's going to really detract from the artwork more than anything. We can achieve pretty crisp text down to about 1.5 millimeters high depending on the material type and we can achieve details that are around 0.2 to 0.4 millimeters wide depending on the materials again. Now in that example we covered the clipping masks, no doubled up paths, no floating points, no overlapping engraved shapes, no white empty gradient fills etc. All text must be outlined, vectors only and no strokes thicker than 0.001 millimeters. Accounting for kerf and material variance is the next issue. Now I explained earlier that when you're cutting through or scoring something that the laser will follow that path exactly as you've outlined it here, which is represented by these uh, red dots um, suggesting that it's moving in this direction. Now if we look at this F here, same instance with the laser beam here, except I've labeled it now what this means is, although that seems like such a small amount, it will have an effect on your designs in some cases. By submitting your artwork with this path, you're actually going to end up with something that is this large. So it's actually 0 0.02 millimeters narrower than you might have intended it to be. And that's because the laser has cut away uh, the space between your specified path and the actual piece of material that you're cutting on. The way to fix this is to offset all your paths by 0.2 millimeters either in the positive or negative so that effectively you're making the laser follow a wider path and you're going to end up with the actual size piece that you are looking for. Now deciding which side to offset on will depend on what you actually want to keep from the material. It's going to be whether you want to keep the actual F on the inside or you want to keep the material around the F and throw away the actual letter on the inside. If you want to keep the actual letter on the inside in this case then you're going to be offsetting your path to the outside which is this path here 
and I've off it, offset it by 0.2 millimeters, as you can see down here. By doing that, the laser is going to follow that outside path when it cuts, and you're going to be left with your original artwork uh, to the exact right scale. Now you might not think that these measurements are relevant because they're so small, but when looking at a box like this that slots together so perfectly without any glue, Kerf really does play into that. And you can use it to your advantage to get very snug fits. Keep in mind though that for an example like this, it does take some playing around, it does take some prototyping. We're happy to help you through that process as well. Heading back over to the last section of that fourth point, we need to talk about material variance. Now material variance relates to the fact that no material is perfectly flat over its entire surface. It can be tapered or it can be wobbly, it can be thicker and thinner in sections. Often with a material like acrylic, it can vary from 0.5 to 1 millimeter over its surface, which is a lot when you're trying to design things that will be slotted into each other. I'm um, like this example at the bottom. If you were to expect that to slot into itself and stay there snugly the first time, even if you accounted for kerf very precisely, it's unlikely that you get it right, unfortunately. These type of things need some level of prototyping and iteration. But one way to get around that is to design these tabs into your job. So you're giving yourself some space around this slot. There's going to be a little bit of flex in this top piece, which is going to allow a tight fit. There's lots of other ways that we can do this. Just let us know that this is uh, an important part of your design, and we can walk you through it. The very last thing to note of these instructions is to avoid nesting. Now here's an example of the ideal file submission on the left and a file that's been nested. Now we prefer to receive files that are not nested. When you nest files like this it takes you a lot more time and it takes us a lot more time to be able to quote and cut the job. We have our own ways of nesting things. That being said we don't mind if you do have to nest something if it's part of your design, it's part of the aesthetic of the design. The final thing I wanted to mention was painting. So we can actually paint a whole range of materials. This is great for you because it expands your palette uh, vastly. The example in the top left there is walnut timber, which has been stenciled and then sprayed onto. The bottom example is a thick black card, which has been screen printed onto essentially. Now, obviously these colors in the artwork uh, are not from the swatches. Now that's okay in these instances where you do want something painted, but what you should do is add a few instructions in the Your Instructions layer here. I'll turn that on to show you what I mean. And it's basically just using common sense here. Uh, there's no strict rules that you need to follow or anything like that. We'll do our best to interpret what you're saying. So to wrap it all up and submit your file, all you have to do is save as a PDF EPS or SVG file. If you've used our design template then all the settings should be as is. You don't need to change any. If not and you've used your own, try to give us the maximum editing capability option uh, in that file so that we can alter your vectors if we have to. Also make sure you name your file with your first name, your last name and the title of your project that just helps us keep track of your job. And then go to the link at the bottom of this page and submit your file. You can submit files up to 10 megabytes in size per upload with a collective size of 20 megabytes. If you need to go over that, just email us directly at contact at Bespoke Laser. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you've learned a whole lot. Uh, apologies if this was too in depth for you. Uh, it's not a problem, just contact us directly and we'll be able to help you out. Otherwise, I think you're going to find that laser cutting with the five different tools you see in front of you will really be the most versatile tool that you'll come across for creating 2D and 3D objects that you didn't think were possible before.